your answer. Okay, so here uh, for number two, we no longer have one object, we have more than one. So if uh, object one has kinetic energy EK1 and object two has kinetic energy EK2, uh, the question is, can the total momentum, so that's the total kinetic energy, which is not zero, can the total momentum P1 plus P2 uh, be zero? And of course, uh, as you can guess already, I'm sure you're screaming your lungs off, uh, the answer is yes. Okay, so um, how does this work? If we have the two balls moving either towards each other, or the two balls are moving away from each other. So as long as they move in opposite directions, and not just that, uh, the added feature is the momentum, if the momentum of one is P, then the momentum of two has to be P as well. So here you can see that this is just P, it's a plus, so let's choose that direction as positive, it's plus P, then this one is moving in the opposite direction, so it's minus P. So then the total momentum is the sum of the two, so we get zero. And even here, if I have momentum P for one, which is uh, plus P, if I choose that as positive, um, then this one is minus P. So the sum is just P plus minus P, which is zero. Uh, but just a reminder, P is MV, so we do have non-zero V, so that means uh, we have non-zero kinetic energy, so we'll have one-half MV1 squared plus one-half MV2 squared. Okay, so even though um, we have zero momentum, we have non-zero kinetic energy because this term is positive, that term is positive, so the total answer is non-zero. So the answer for number two is a definite yes. Okay, so now, um, number three, we have a 0 0.5 kilogram ball which is dropped uh, from rest at a point of 1.2 meters above the floor and the ball rebounds straight upward to a height of 0 0.7. What are the magnitude and direction of the impulse of the net force applied to the ball during the collision with the floor? Okay, so now let's look at number three. So number three, we are told we have a ball, let's assume it's a tennis ball. Initially, it has a height of 1.2. It's dropped, so if it's dropped, that means the initial speed is equals to zero. And then it bounces off and it comes back to a smaller height, which is um, 0 0.7 meters. Okay, so now the question is what is the impulse? Okay, so the impulse we said is the change in momentum or it's also given by the applied force uh, multiplied by the change in time. Okay, so the applied force would be the force of the flow on the ball. But how does this work? What is this T and where does it come from? When the ball is in contact with the surface, it deforms. So it deforms and then it gains uh, kinetic energy in the opposite direction. So initially it's coming in and then it's, it's deformed and then it's pushed up. And uh, uh, that's how it works. And then it gains the, f the, the, the shape back. And um, this part where it's deformed, it's in contact with the surface and it takes a time t to lose contact with the surface. So it experiences a force f during that time. Okay, so that's the impulse. But in this case, we don't have the force and we don't have the time, so we just need to calculate the change in momentum. So how do we then calculate the change in momentum? The momentum uh, that it has as it hits the surface, that's our initial um, uh, momentum. So we need the final speed as it hits the surface for this part. So here we need Vf, and that Vf is our initial uh, for the total problem. So it's the final for this section, but it's the initial for uh, the change in momentum, okay? And then on the other side, we need the initial speed that the ball moves up with. Uh, so that's Vi 
but vi is the final speed for uh, the total problem so initially it hits the floor that's why the vf here is vi and then it leaves the floor that's after so that's the final speed but it's the initial for this section and also just a reminder that if the ball goes to a height of 0 0.7 meters that means after 0 0.7 meters uh, which is vf the speed is zero so it stops okay so we need to choose a direction of motion let's choose down as positive if we choose down as positive g is equal to positive 9.8 meters per square seconds okay so now uh, let's use equations of motion for this half uh, to find vf so we know vi we know h and we want to find vf we know g okay so there's no t uh, then the equation of motion that we use is um, vf squared equals vi squared so i'm looking for one section one so problem number one uh, plus two g h okay so and then uh, we said vi is zero so that's zero and we are looking for vf so vf is just 2gh and if we just plug in the values it's 2 g is 9.8 it's positive because it's going down so it's positive and then h is also positive because the displacement is in the direction of motion and it's just 1.2 okay so uh, let's plug that in so we've got 2 times um, 9.8 uh, times uh, now we need um, uh, 1.2 okay so we get the answer and then just remember that uh, that is v squared so we need the square root of the answer and that would be our final answer so um, when you've got an answer like this in your calculator just press the SD uh, button so it changes uh, a fraction into a decimal so that's the decimal and we find 4.85 okay so uh, because vf is down it takes the positive so vf will then be plus 4.8 uh, okay let's just switch so i just want to remind you because vf for this portion is down it takes the positive um, and vf here would then be plus 4.8 and the next value is 5 meters per second but just a reminder that vf is actually the initial speed for the change in momentum okay then now we are going to look at uh, 2 so for 2 we know the final speed is 0 we know the height is 0 0.7 we know g we want the initial speed so again we use vf squared equals vi squared plus 2gh okay so um, in this case vf is zero so we have zero equals and then the initial speed is what we want so vi squared plus two um, so g is positive uh, because it's going down we said down is positive so that's positive nine point eight but h is up so it's negative the displacement is in the opposite direction of our positive so negative 0 0.7 okay so you might be worried uh, how are we going to have a square root which is negative actually we want uh, because if you take this to the other side uh, the negative becomes a positive so now vi if you just plug it in so um, just press on and then you have 2 times 9.8 times 0 0.7 and you get that that's vi squared you need the square root of the answer and remember to press the button then it's gonna be 3.70 so we get vi is equals to and remember that vi is going up which is negative so remember that so vi uh, is equals to negative 3.7 
Okay, so negative 3.7 meters per second. Okay, and again a reminder that the initial speed for the second part is the final for the whole problem. Okay, so what is the change in momentum? Change in momentum, which is the impulse now, will be um, uh, the momentum, so the final momentum minus the initial momentum. Okay, so um, what is this equal to? The mass of the object uh, is given, uh, it's 0 0.5, so the mass of the ball is 0 0.5 kilograms, so multiplied by the final speed, and the final speed, just a reminder, uh, is this one. So we have negative 3.7, so the sign is important because it's a vector, and then we have the minus from the equation, and the mass is still 0 0.5, and now the speed is the initial, which was a plus, so plus 4.85. Okay, so then what is our final answer? So now, um, let's plug it in. So we have um, 0 0.5 multiplied by negative uh, 3.7 so if you have negative you use this negative and not this one so times negative uh, 3.7 close the bracket and then this minus is for minusing uh, the sign in between so and then times 0 0.5 uh, 0 0.5 times 4.87 okay so uh, 85 and this was the positive, so I won't put a plus there. I'll just leave it as that. And the final answer is negative. So we get uh, the impulse is negative. Um, uh, so we get the impulse equals negative 4.275 um, Newton second so what does this mean remember that positive was down so it means because we have a negative it's up so the final answer would be 4.275 newton second upwards okay so that's the change in momentum okay um i just want to uh, point out that the answer in your book is incorrect. So just correct that. The correct answer is 4.275 Newton second and it's upwards. Okay, so now uh, let's move on. We are almost done uh, to question four. Uh, let's actually skip question four and go straight to question five. Okay, so question five, uh, also, there's a mistake in the solution, especially the second equation. One of these two should be a minus, but we'll see how that uh, comes about. So, number five, we have a hockey puck B, which rests on a smooth ice surface and is, uh, they should be this should be struck by a second puck. Okay, A, which is uh, originally traveling at 30 meters per second and deflected 30 degrees from its original direction. Then puck B acquires a velocity, uh, at 45 degrees relative to the original velocity of A. Uh, the two packs have equal mass and we need to write down the equations to determine the unknown velocities after vision. Okay, so uh, let's, let's see what we have. Okay, a new page. So this is page 55, number, uh, number 5. Okay, so page 55, number 5, uh, what we have is, um, so we have a pack which I'll draw as a box, pack B, and it just rests initially. Then another one, A, uh, is actually moving um, at uh, 30 meters per second, so 30 meters per second and it hits this one and then they are deflected. But you can see from here that I'm drawing the side view, which is quite difficult to see, I mean to bring in the angles. So I'm gonna draw the top view. So imagine that that is how it looks like. There's our A. 
and there's our B. So A is coming in at 30 meters per second. And remember that these two have equal masses. So this has mass M, that's mass M, that's mass M. And this one initially just rests. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose X, as I said earlier, as the direction of motion. Uh, and I'm going to choose Y as the perpendicular to that. Okay, so what happens afterwards? Uh, afterwards, we are told that... Uh, so uh, this was the initial direction of motion for A, that one of them goes uh, at an angle. So let's say that is A. Uh, A goes at an angle of 30 degrees. Let me just double check to make sure. Okay, so A is deflected at 30 degrees to the original direction and B is deflected at 45 degrees. So it's similar to our uh, pool example. Mm. And um, okay, so now let's call this uh, speed VA or velocity VA and this velocity VB. Okay, so how do we solve this problem? We are going to use conservation of uh, uh, momentum in two dimensions. So let's start. So momentum before equals momentum after. Okay, so and this is in the, uh, we start with the y direction because it's easier. Okay, and in the y direction you can see, so that is x and that's our y. You can see that initially there's no components over here. So 0 for A and it's 0 for B. Then afterwards for A, Y is up, which is positive. So it's M and then for the speed it's positive. Uh, the magnitude is VA. I want the Y component. The angle is 30. So it's going to be VA sine 30 degrees. And then I've got plus from the equation. The mass is also m, but now the other one is going down, which is negative. The magnitude is vb, so negative vb, and the angle is 45, so sine 45. Okay, so taking this to the other side, I learned that m va sine 30 equals m vb sine 45. Okay, so that's, that's one of the equations. But if you like, you can leave the equation in this form. And you can see why I was saying the answer in the book is wrong, because we have a minus for one of them. Okay, and notice that uh, this is not unique. You could have drawn your diagram so that, remember that was the direction of motion, so that A actually is below, so the 30 is over there, and the 45 is over there. So that's equally correct. Okay. So that's that's our uh, first equation. And then our second equation, we just use conservation of momentum uh, in the x direction. So momentum before in the x direction equals momentum after in the x direction. So before uh, the momentum in the x direction is just for A. So we've got, uh, let's call this speed V0. So it's mass of A, which is M, times the speed, which is V0. And the speed is in the positive direction of X. So this is a plus. And plus, this is resting initially. B is resting, so plus 0 equals. Then the momentum after for uh, the X components for both. So uh, you can see that the X component for A is that direction. The X component for B is that direction, which both are positive. Okay, so it's mass of B. Uh, actually, let's start with A, mass of A, times uh, the magnitude of the speed uh, for, for um, I mean, the magnitude of the vec uh, velocity for A, multiplied by now it's going to be cos, so for A the angle is 30, cos 30. Okay, and then plus the mass of B, it's also um, positive, so I should put a positive there, and then VB because the angle is 45, so 45 degrees. Okay, so our second equation, you can also see 
that the mass M cancels out. And remember that V0 is 30, so we learn that 30 equals um, VA. Cos 30 is square root 3 over 2. Uh, cos 45 is square root 2 over 2, but I won't put them in. So VA cos 30 degrees plus VB cos 45 degrees. Okay, so that's our um, second equation, which is over here. Okay, so that completes um, uh, the problem, which is question five. Okay, question five and question seven are the same problem, so um, I would advise you to do uh, problem number seven on your own. Um, and uh, the hint that I would give is call this direction uh, your x direction. So the direction of motion initially for the rocket is x. And the other hint I would give is uh, because just remember that they said um, the rocket suddenly breaks up into two e uh, pieces of equal mass. So call this one m, call that one m. So it breaks up into two equal masses, which is m and m. So going backwards, you can see that the total mass was m plus m, which is 2m. So you have 2m here, you have m there and m there. And then again, it's conservation of momentum in the x direction and conservation of momentum in the y directions. And then you will be able to solve v1 and v2. Uh, so just like here, um, if you check this equation, I can write, okay, here I should have canceled the m's. I can write va in terms of vb. And then by doing what? By dividing by sine 30. So then we would learn um, that va equals uh, vb sine 45 over sine 30. And then I would use this answer uh, in the second equation. So where there's VA, I just substitute this number and I can solve for VB. After solving for VB, I then substitute back VB over here to find VA. And that's how you would find um, V1 and uh, V2 for problem number seven. Okay, so um, now let's look at uh, question number six. So question number six, we are told we have a half kg bullet of mass. Uh, uh, yeah, so the half kg is the mass. It's fired horizontally. So there's the bullet. It's fired horizontally at a speed V0, and, um, which is 45 meters per second, at a stationary wooden block. So the block is initially stationary, and it has a mass of 10 kilograms. After the, as soon as the bullet hits the block, it instantly stops. So that means um, they move together. As soon as the bullet hits the block, they move, they start moving together. Okay. So you can imagine, um, oops. Okay, my mic just uh, fell. So sorry about that. So you can imagine that what you have is um, something like this. There is the block, there is the bullet. The bullet comes, it hits the block. As soon as it hits the block, they are both stationary and they move together. Okay, so um, let me demonstrate that on the screen. So um, what I mean is that, so what you imagine is there's your block, there's your bullet coming in. And as soon as the bullet hits the block, so that's the bullet block system, they then move together with the same speed, V. Okay, so you can see that the total mass of the two is the mass of the bullet plus the mass of the bullet, uh, the block afterwards, okay, uh, times the speed. So this looks similar to inelastic collision. Uh, in fact, I think it is. So um, let's see what the question is. So the question was, um, to okay, so the block with the embedded bullet slides along a horizontal surface with a coefficient of 0 0.125. Part A, we should determine the speed, uh, the takeoff speed of the block uh, with the embedded bullet. So for that, we'll use conservation of momentum. We know the momentum before, it's just this plus zero. And then after, it's the momentum of the bullet block system. So we can find V. Then how far does the block go uh, or slide before it comes to rest? For that part, we just use work and energy because we know that all of the energy of the bullet block system is lost to the surface. Okay, so let's start with part A. 
so once again page 55 number 6 so part A um, the momentum before equals the momentum after this is in one dimension so there's no need for x and y and then before it's just the mass of the bullet which I've, uh, I'll call small m for the block I'll use big M times the speed of the bullet which is V0 so call that direction the direction of motion is positive uh, so here this is a plus and then plus the block is just resting initially so plus zero equals after they move together so the total mass is m plus m and the speed is v so we are looking for the velocity v um, but now uh, just a reminder that afterwards they move in the same direction um, as the block which is that way so this is just plus so i don't need the arrow okay so what we find is v is just i need to divide by this m plus m uh, so I find m v naught all over m plus big M. Okay, so if we substitute, remember m is a half. Uh, v naught is 45. And then m plus m, big M is 10, so half plus 10. Okay, so what does this give us? Um, this will give us... Uh, let's see so we have a half times uh, 45 over 10.5 which is 10 plus a half so what we get is 2.14 okay so our final answer is v is 2.14 meters per second okay so what that means is uh, the final speed of the or the initial speed of the bullet and the block is equal to 2.14 meters per second in the direction that the bullet was moving so here I'll just use east so it's east so the bullet was initially moving east and the bullet block system also moved east okay so that's conservation of momentum and then now for part B how far do they move? For that, we know that the frictional force times the distance, which is the distance of how far they move, times cos theta is equal to the change in kinetic energy. So here I'm using the work energy theorem. So work is force times distance times cos theta, and it's also equals to delta EK. Okay, so from this side, frictional force is just mu K N, but for the block, in the y direction, it's only the weight and the normal force that are acting. So n is just mg. So I'll just rub off the m and substitute mg. So mu k n, and then now we've got s. And the angle between, so remember that the frictional force, there's the block. Frictional force is acting in that direction. The block is moving in that direction so uh, the angle between friction and displacement is this one here which is 180 degrees cos of 180 degrees is just minus 1 so then I've got multiplied by minus 1 this is equal to kinetic energy remember that change is final minus initial finally they stop so it's zero then initially it's minus one half and uh, okay so here uh, remember that the mass that I put here should be for the bullet and the block so it's m plus big m okay so even here it's m plus m that's the kinetic energy of the system and then uh, multiplied by v squared and this v squared is the initial speed we've just calculated over here so the m plus m cancels on both sides the minus one uh, cancels that minus so then what we are left with is that s equals this side i've got v i squared over there's a two so two then i need to divide by mu k and g so two mu k g okay and then substituting remember that uh, 
So remember that we said it's 2.14 for VI, so 2.14 squared over, I've got a 2, new K is 0 0.125, and G is 9.8. Okay, so plugging these in, what do we find? Uh, we find the following. So we've got um, 2.14, so 2.14 squared times, uh, oh, there's nothing else. So at the bottom we have 2 times uh, 0 0.125 multiplied by 9.8. Okay, so if you multiply those out, you get 1.869 meters. Okay, so S is just 1.8. 6.9 meters. Okay, so uh, that's uh, the two solutions. The speed was 2.14 and S is 1.869 um, meters. Okay, so mm, that completes uh, today's lesson. Um, so um, what I would then advise is that uh, you check uh, um, Blackboard, I will put a solution for number three, which is a tedious uh, question from page uh, 54. So page 54, from the problems that you do with uh, the lecturers, uh, number three is a long question, uh, and it's elastic collision. So we use a combination of conservation of kinetic energy and conservation of momentum. Uh, my solution, which you can see over here, is a very long solution. Okay, so kinetic energy is conserved, and momentum is conserved. So what you have initially is ball A is moving at 0 0.4 meters per second towards ball B, which is just resting. And they want to know how do they move afterwards. And that's my solution. But how do we get that? We start off and we look at momentum before and momentum after. And it's just one dimension. So before, only A is moving. And it's moving in what I've called the positive uh, direction, which is the direction of A. So I've got the mass of A uh, multiplied by the speed of A, which is positive, plus zero because B is resting, and then equals the mass of A times uh, the speed of A plus mass of B times the speed of B. That's after the collision. Okay, so if I substitute now, there's the mass, there's the mass. I don't know the velocities, so I leave them as vectors. Then here you can see there's a common 0, 1.5 and even there, so I just divide by 0 0.1, uh, 0 0.015 because it's a small number and it can be irritating working with them. So here I'll be left with 0 0.4, then I, I only have uh, a VA plus 3 because that's 45, this is 15. So dividing this by 0 0.015, you get 3. And from this, you can see that I can write VA in terms of VB, so it's just 0 0.4 minus 3 VB. Then now, we use conservation of kinetic energy. Kinetic energy before is kinetic energy after. Before is just uh, A that is moving with a speed of 0 0.4. So it's just 1 half MA V squared. And the 1 halves you can see also cancel. So And then B is just stationary, so plus 0. And afterwards, it's just the kinetic energy of A and the kinetic energy of B. So I've just canceled the halves. And then for A, I've got the mass is 0 0.015. Uh, there is the initial speed. Don't forget to square. For uh, for A after, I've got the mass. Then just remember that VA we've just found from conservation of momentum it, in terms of VB. So we want to solve them simultaneously. So substitute VA for VB so, so that you only have one unknown. Okay, so substituting 0 0.4 minus v, uh, 3 VB. This is a scalar. We are talking about speed. So you lose the arrows. Okay, so you square that plus 0 0.045 uh, and then times VB squared. And then just manipulating these two, you will find that the final answer for VB is 0 or 0 0.2. So 0 is when this is stationary, 0 0.2 is the final answer, which is uh, positive. And then substituting the 0 0.2 in this equation, we get negative 0 0.2, which means uh, A is moving in the opposite direction it came in. So that's uh, how you solve the problem. But I will just scan this solution and email it to you. Okay, thank you for having me.